Welcome back to the Uptime Wind Energy Podcast. I'm your host, Alan Hall, President and CEO of WeatherGuard Lightning Tech, and we are here in Wind Europe 2023 in Copenhagen with Nicholas Godern, CTO of Power Curve. Welcome, Nicholas. Hey, Alan. Nice to be back on with you. So th there's a lot happening in Copenhagen this week. Uh, there are so many operators here yes. and, and OEMs. Uh, so the first time we've seen GE Bernova show up in, in, in a number of shows, uh, but I've met so many new operators or, in, that are really just diving into when they're buying assets and they're now they're trying to figure out how to maximize those, those uh, assets. And one of the things that we hear at our booth is we need to get the aerodynamics cleaned up. Yes. And I said, well, you need to go down a couple of blocks in this conference center and talk to Power Curve because uh, Power Curve knows about your blade and can make them more efficient. So I, I know you guys have been totally busy. We've pretty much give, got handed out every hand up we brought. It's already been distributed. This is only the second day of yeah. three. Uh, so it's been a tremendous conference. What, what are you hearing from some of the operators and OEMs this week? Yeah, it's, it's really interesting, and, and yeah, it is a huge conference. The attendance is great. I think the atmosphere is really nice. There's a lot of positivity, I would say, yeah, yeah. around the industry yeah, at the moment, yeah. which is really nice to be part of. Um, I think one of the biggest things we've been discussing with, uh, with people visiting our booth is how do you understand uh, how best to manage your blade over its lifetime? So there's a lot of attention being paid to so how do you get the most out of your blade at, at all points of its life? So not necessarily, you know, getting the very best blade at the beginning or the end, but just, just kind of tracking progress, tracking performance, and taking appropriate mitigation methods at, at, the, at the best possible time. And that's something that we've been focusing quite heavily on for the last couple of years. So if you understand the, the blade aerodynamics in, in great detail, you can start to map on the impacts of the real world blade conditions. Yeah. So when a blade's out in the field, you know, it's, 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 it's suffering. <laughs> it's suffering. <laughs> it, you know, it's in this really ag aggressive environment sometimes, uh, particularly offshore. You've got heavy wind, rain, dirt, bugs, ice. And all of these things are, are really challenging from a performance perspective. And you know, if you want to optimize how much energy that blade's producing. Yeah. So one way you can uh, look at that is to take uh, inspection data from a blade. So drone inspection data, preferably, because that is close to the blade, high resolution, lots of detail. Right. right. And, and then what we do at Power Curve is we build an aerodynamic model of the specific uh, turbine model in question. So okay. we do laser scans and CFD analysis, build this really big picture, uh, sorry, detailed picture of a blade. Yeah, so let's just talk about that for a second, because I don't yeah. think, when I talk to people about laser scanning their blades, I get a lot of puzzled looks like, well, why would I need to laser scan my blade? Don't, can't you just <laughs> tell by looking at it what the aerodynamics are? That they're, they're all a generic blade shape, are they not? Uh, unfortunately not. Okay. <laughs> unfortunately not. I mean, that's the thing with blades. A lot of them, they look they look really similar, right? They're, yes, they're big, they do. white, blade-like things. But the subtleties of the aerodynamic performance uh, are critical. And the only way to really understand that is to, is to have a detailed geometric model of the blade, which you can obtain by laser scanning. So if you take a slice through a blade, a cross-section, that aerofoil profile that you see uh, will be different uh, all along the blade. Sure. And it will be different between blade manufacturers, yeah. so that's why we do the laser scanning to really understand that level of detail. Do you see differences between the same blade, same blade manufacturer made with the blade made at different factories, or is the all the molds pretty close? The molds are very are very close. Okay. I think uh, you may get some subtleties in the fact that blades, in, in a way, are handcrafted products to an extent. So the way it may have been ground or finished, you may see some some subtle deviations, but. Fundamentally, the bulk shape of the blade is, yeah, it's a molded product. It's, okay. It's, it's so nice. I have somebody come out and scan the blade with a laser and, yep. and get really uh, specific measurements of what that shape is, all those, all those subsequent airfoils. Yep. You take that data and then what happens with it? What can you do with that data? So what we do is we build a, a CAD model of the blade 
and that allows us to then have this really great foundation to build an aerodynamic uh, model of the turbine. So we can build a nice CAD model, can slice that CAD model up, and for every section of the blade, we can produce an aerodynamic data set. So the okay. lift and the drag characteristics of that section, and they are what dictate the turbine performance. Okay. So if right. we understand the lift and the drag, we know how the blade performs. And that's the building blocks of all the stuff we're doing here. Okay. Get that baseline baseline blade performance. So, you know, that's the old garbage in, garbage out. You gotta have yes. really good data on the blade itself before you can do any analysis on it. Yeah, yeah, okay. ab absolutely. Because if you start uh, making generic models of blades, you know, you can use some rules of thumb, but it, it's it's not good enough. Blades, blades are, are different and they're subtle and you need to understand that. If you're looking for that last one or 2%, yeah, you absolutely. need to have the real blade model. I, I've seen other companies not to mention that are here, that look like they're taking generic blade shapes and then trying to do some analysis on it. And that, to me, if I'm, I, that can't be very accurate. No. Okay. No, no. And, and I think if, if the data source is available, then you should use it. And that'll oh, yeah. give you, that'll yeah. give you yeah, the, yeah. Best, the best possible model. Yeah, and, and taking laser measurements of the blade is uh, sort of a one-day uh, event? Yeah, yeah, you can easily do it within a day. Yeah. Can you do it with the blades still attached to the turbine? Yes, yeah, the blades uh, can be on the turbine or on the ground, and the the laser scanning device would be would be on the ground itself. Okay. So it's, it's a pretty straightforward uh, process. Um, I think the real skill comes in the details of how you set up the scanner, the number of scans you take, how you align them, and then going on to build a CAD model that is really nice and you know tangentially consistent sure. and smooth yeah okay so there's a little bit of cleanup that happens even from a good laser scan oh absolutely you, okay. you need someone who really knows blades to build your CAD model it's it's not good enough just to be a, a good CAD engineer you I think you really do need that experience of blades and aerofoils yeah okay so everybody listening scan your blades that yeah. should that should be realistically that should be something that the operator owner should have in their files. We we are seeing anyway. that more and more. We're we're talking to operators who just as a matter of course are looking to obtain as much geometric data as they can around the blade from the start. Right. Because you never know when you're going to use it. Maybe it's for aerodynamic analysis with with us. Maybe it's yeah. for building a a blade yoke or a crane handling. Yes. You know, all these things require CAD models and. Um, the OEM sometimes aren't so aren't so keen to share. No. Um, so yeah, as an operator, I would recommend that you obtain geometric data. And I think the methodology we've developed, we'd be very happy to discuss that and say, well, what's what's the best way to do it? Because we've seen how not to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, with the blades on the ground, so you're you're, you're putting blades on in a, in a new installation. When the yeah. blades on the ground, that's got to be the easiest that's thing. Prime or, time. Yeah. or a repower, or if you have a spare blade in the yard. That's that's the one you would choose, right? It's, it just gets a little more complicated from there. Makes life much easier, yeah. right? But for a relatively tiny amount of money, which is what oh, it it's is, insignificant, yeah. right? Yeah. You, you have that data point, and then when problems pop up, now I I don't have to mess around. I can get start working on a solution. Yes, which is uh, I I think key as we get going forward. More people need to know what's yep. going on with their blades. Yeah, absolutely. So, and, and that's that's what we've been doing. So taking that model that we've just described, how we, we construct, and then every single damage that we see uh, from a drone inspection, and we have a, a really nice partnership with SkySpecs mm -hmm. at the moment. So we're using the SkySpecs drone inspection data, and then we couple that with our aerodynamic model, and the result is uh, what we call the AP loss analysis tool. So this is an offering between PowerCurve and SkySpecs that uses the real photographs, the real inspection data of the blade, the real geometric and aerodynamic model of the blade, meshes those two things together automatically and gives you an AEP loss expectation from all the damages that are present in the blade. Okay, let, let me ask about that because I had someone ask us, uh, I, I was trying to explain this to somebody today, they go, uh, the response was, well, is it just, isn't it just AI? Like I just put in the chat GPT and it spits out an AEP that loss? Would, that would be lovely. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> I mean, may, uh, maybe give it a few years, we might be all out of jobs, but at the moment uh, it needs some real engineering skill and experience. Right, because you're, you're able to, to look at really minor levels of damage into a yes. bigger picture to then come up with an AEP exactly. loss number. 
And, and, and there's, there's some AEP loss numbers, you know, typically less than a percent, where you probably just don't do that much with. That doesn't yeah. make sense to. Uh, when we were at uh, Blades USA conference a, a couple of months ago, or maybe a couple of weeks ago now, I've lost track, uh, RDBE gave a really interesting presentation about leading edge erosion and how much AEP loss there was and what that meant in terms of revenue. And it's the huge. numbers were astounding. It's scary. So, yeah. uh, a couple of percentage points, it's hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah, and you and if you don't if you don't know, you don't know. So yeah. I think a lot of blade repairs are focused around structural defects, structural risk, which is clearly important. But if you combine that with an aerodynamic assessment, aerodynamic layer, you can make a much more joined up decision about performance loss, revenue, structural risk tie it all together to, to optimize your O&M campaign over the whole site. Right, so you can actually, because um, not, not all the blades are the same, right? So okay. in, in a particular farm, you're gonna have some blades that are just being terrorized by, yes. by rain and some that look probably pretty good. Yeah, and we find that really quite large variation across some sites. So again, this is I think where this method comes into its own because you're, you're looking at every turbine individually uh, with, with the real aero model. So yeah. you can determine those differences across the site and prioritize what to fix first, what your potential recovery and gain is going to be, and just make a much more data-driven decision. You know, take, take the guesswork out of it, yeah. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. Are you seeing a lot of people start to pick up this activity uh, as an operator to say, I, I need to understand what's going on. I, I need to be able to make some financial decisions here. I have a, a, a certain amount of budget. Do we go put on leading edge protection? Do we not? Do we just just tell me what, what yes. the financial impact is? Are, and so are, are operators really starting to, to see the light, so yeah, to speak? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, and um, you know, we've run uh, a couple of really nice projects now uh, with Sky Specs with some big operators in the USA. We've run, I think, nearly 2,000 turbines through the system, and the data is 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 great and it's providing deep insight and we're getting some, some very nice feedback as to what the potential value is in terms of yeah, how you manage your O&M yeah, sure. uh, program. Yeah. Sure, okay, so there's, there's a lot more to come. I, 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 I just talking to you this morning, you have a number of blades already in your database, yeah. but there, there is always a need to put more into that database. Of course, so whenever we have the opportunity, we'll go and scan a blade, but um, yeah, we have, I think it's around 30 blades in our scan database so far, and that covers a pretty big chunk of the installed capacity in, say, the USA. Right. So we've tried to target, obviously, the the top used models. Sure. Um, and yeah, we're, we're always looking for expanding that library. So how does, how does an operator or an owner reach out to you to, to implement this AEP loss model with, with Sky Specs? Do they contact... Uh, Power curve, or how, how does this happen? How do, you, um, how do you start? So I think if uh, if the customer already has a, a relationship with Sky Specs, you know, okay. if they're using Horizon, then I would say reach out to your um, your contact at Sky Specs. Okay. You know, who you're working with. You're also always very welcome to, to come to Power Curve directly. Okay, that's fine too. And between us, we'll we'll make sure you speak to the right people to, to get this set up. But from Power Curve perspective, um, you'll often talk to me. Uh, from a technical, from a, for, yeah. for the technical stuff, you can um, move, yeah. And Sky Specs will then be leading on the uh, on the commercial side of things. As okay. A, as a general. So PowerCurve's website is powercurve.dk. That's correct. Correct. Okay. Yep. I want to make sure it's it's yep. Denmark. Okay. Powercurve.dk. Uh, you can also find myself and my colleagues on on LinkedIn. Yes. You're always welcome to send us a message or get in touch with us via the website, and we can uh, <laughs> we can decide how best to to help you. But I think. The more data that we see in the system, the more we're absolutely convinced that this is what operators should be doing. Yeah. You know, it, it's the best way to, to optimize your decision making. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I agree. I think more operators are going to be using this to to plan. Yeah, that's what it's used for. Yeah, yeah. no, that, that's fantastic, Nicholas. Thanks so much for being here today. Uh, we're about to get run out because there's a, a big award ceremony yes. going on next to us yeah. and a saxophone player from the Polish delegation <laughs> is going to start up here yeah. in a minute. Yeah. So, Wonderful. <laughs> yeah, so thank you for being here. And uh, yeah, we'll, be, we'll, we'll have you back on in a, in a couple months. I know we're going to see you in New Orleans. So yeah, uh, that'll be exciting.